Hi everybody, so here you are, you've signed up for your first anatomy and physiology course. So let's make sure you know what you've gotten yourself into. So anatomy is the study that focuses on the parts of the body and their location. And when we say parts, we mean both microscopic as well as macroscopic, sometimes called gross parts. So when we study anatomy, we might be studying the liver and the stomach or a cardiovascular system, but very often we're also studying cells or even subcellular components such as mitochondria and other organelles. Anatomy also looks at how all of these structures or parts in the body are organized, where they are located. So location is a very important component of anatomy. Now, you can't really study parts of the body and where they're located without also knowing what they do, and vice versa. We can't really study physiology, which focuses on the function of all these body parts, whether they're microscopic or macroscopic. We can't re really study their function unless we know what they look like and where they're located. So we say that anatomy and physiology complement one another, or we talk about the complementarity of these two studies. They really can't do without one another. We're going to see that when we focus on the function of body parts, which we do a lot in the lecture component of this class, the function, studying the function is going to therefore result in us focusing quite a bit on all kinds of metabolic reactions. So let's refresh our memory about metabolism. What does metabolism mean? Metabolism includes all reactions in the body, all chemical reactions in the body. So notice that this definition does not say anything about the use of ATP or the making of ATP or the digesting of food. It is any and every chemical reaction that occurs in the body. We're going to be talking about a lot of chemical reactions this semester, and so they're all part of metabolism. And some of these reactions are catabolic, meaning they break down bigger products, or they are anabolic, they build products. And then we're also going to very much focus on homeostasis. As a matter of fact, homeostasis forms the foundation of anatomy and physiology and future courses you're about to take. As a matter of fact, homeostasis forms the foundation of patient care, basically, because without having a good understanding of how the body tries to maintain this dynamic state of equilibrium, which is what the definition is of homeostasis, without having a good understanding of this, we can also not take proper care of our patients. And notice that the key here is a dynamic state of equilibrium, implying that the body is constantly fluctuating somewhat, but around an average point. Just like we tend to say that our body temperature tends to say stay at about 37 degrees Celsius, knowing very well that it tends to fluctuate within narrow ranges. So that is the definition of homeostasis. In the next segment, in the next presentation, you're going to learn more about something called the homeostatic control mechanism, which then leads into positive and negative feedback mechanisms.